I want to talk about politics and God for a minute. But I hope to keep it brief because it's a basic, a very simple thing I want to say. I didn't originally support Donald Trump because I didn't know about Donald Trump. I didn't know who Donald Trump was or what he was really about until well into his run for candidacy. I was uh, not really aware of him. Got to merge in here and be careful. Uh, I'm going to get over just for the sake of ease and safety here. Okay. All right. All right, safety first, right? So I wasn't really aware of him until much later in the story I was supporting Benjamin Carson. I was really for Ben Carson as president because as far as I could see, he was outspokenly for absolutely everything that I believed in. And apparently, though I, I was unaware of this at the time, he's a deeply Christian man. And so that's no surprise to me. And just like Donald Trump, he was not a career politician. And I think that's a good thing. I don't believe in this theory, and it, and it is nothing but a theory that career politicians have more experience and are therefore better at their jobs. That's baloney. That's absolutely silly. It's craziness. Uh, it's not true. Career politicians are not somehow better at their jobs. In fact, every single time that a non-career politician has taken office, such as Arnold Schwarzenegger, Ronald Reagan, um, Donald Trump, you know, all these people who are not career politicians, they step into office, you know, George Washington for crying out loud. They do fantastic jobs. They do a fantastic job almost every single time. And I think we should recognize that. I, so Dr. Carson was never really a politician. He was a doctor. So he's definitely a very smart man. And I respected the idea that he doesn't, you know, know every single issue off the top of his head. But then he would go back, so people could surprise him in an interview, like say, what do you think about this? And say, huh, uh, he gives out like a basic statement he doesn't know. But then like next time he comes slow, so the first time he was a little surprised and then he comes out, you know, a couple days later and he's like, okay, now I have an answer to your question. So, you know, he's not trying to memorize everything off the top of his head. He He's focusing on the, the task at hand and then he, he comes back later to give you an answer to the question you asked him the other day. So, you know, I respect that and I, I really like him. And so when I was hoping for someone to be run for president, it was Ben Carson. You know, I was championing him and I, I still love him. And it turns out he ended up being, you know, getting to be part of the cabinet or something anyways. So that's really good. But because uh, he and Donald Trump are really close but it was my, my mother who really introduced me to uh, Donald Trump to to say, hey, you, sh you should support this guy. And, and I was like, well, oh, okay. I mean, I was I was giving him, give him a shot. I don't I don't know, you know. But it turned out to be really good, and that really was a, an act of God. And that's why you know so many people on the deep internet really supported Donald Trump because there's actually, if you believe it, there were miracles going on inside the internet inside the numbers and the, 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 the ones and zeros and the code of the internet that was actually acting like a sign or a miracle or a wonder for these people that actually convinced them that there's something going on here. And you know, that's why they call, talked about Keck, K-E-K, Keck. You know, and of course they, they added their own ideas to it, which is fine, but, and I'm not talk, not racism. I'm not talking about that, that's not good. And, you know, I think that there's a lot of confusion about that issue. So that's not really what's going on here. But what they did do is they, they considered Keck to be like the miracle, the, the God who was doing these miracles. If you believe it, you're like, this is, they were saying, hmm, whoa, what's this guy doing? They were, 
Oh, here we go. No parking. And well, what it was is the real God. And so they were actually, you know, drawn to God as a result of Donald Trump. And they've actually come into their own, standing up for things that they believe in, but were, you know, unable to say previously. But the main thing is, I didn't really know about, what I'm trying to say is, I didn't really know about Donald Trump. I was not, like, hoping that for some, for some savior in the form of government. I wasn't hoping that government would be my rescuer and savior to stand up for what's good for me. I was, I don't know, I was just hoping not to have disaster and destruction. Have the Philistines, you know, murder us and, and kill us, which is what Hillary Clinton would have done. She would have put us in concentration camps. And that's why she's accusing Donald Trump. But, um, anyways, I so I just want to say my experience as a Don, I, as a Donald Trump supporter, I've been ninety percent happy with him. I did, I'm I was upset with him because he tried to give away the land of Israel, and I was upset with him, and I still am upset with him because of the way he's treating the whistleblowers Julian Assange and Edward Snowden, who are American heroes and martyrs and righteous people who should be celebrated by America and celebrated by England and celebrated by the whole world and protected because they're right, they're good guys. And, you know, they took a stand. And you know what? Did it cause trouble for some people? Did it cause harm for some people? Yes. Sorry, that's true. But the only reason they did it was because the agencies for whom those people were working were murdering and defrauding and committing serious crimes, even very violent crimes, against the citizens and people of their respective countries. In England and in the United States and elsewhere, the governments were even murdering and killing and assassinating civilians. So yes, did he reveal spies? Of course he did. But was he right to do so? I think so. The reason why? because there are some very horrible things going on that were revealed by WikiLeaks, and everybody read it. Leftists and right-wingers and centrists and everybody read WikiLeaks. And it's a very good thing we did, and that's the reason why we voted for Donald Trump, because we were upset. That, that's what revealed the deep, tr the deep reality of what Obama was doing. It was very, very horrible, scary. He was like a totalitarian dictator. He was like a king. He was like... Like the Antichrist or something. It was very bad. Very, very evil. Very, very corrupt. And so, you know, and I don't need to get into that, but when I say this, I didn't expect, I wasn't like looking for Donald Trump or championing him. I didn't like lift him up onto the pedestal. And I've not, you know, been 100% happy with everything he did. He was wrong to bomb Assad because I don't think Assad gassed anybody. I think that the ISIS people gassed people. And it turns out that those white helmet guys, those guys with the white helmets, they're actually, they were actually a branch of ISIS pretending to be civilians and committing terrorist acts and false flags and fake, fake news attacks on people in order to, to deceive and promote the cause of ISIS. So actually, I don't believe that Assad killed or attacked anyone. Assad has actually turned out to be a very protective leader in, in to protecting, he's protecting the Kurds, he's protecting the Christians. You know, he's a rational type of guy. I'm not saying he's a good guy or perfect, but he is protective of minorities. And so I think that Donald Trump was wrong to blow up the airfield or attack Assad because I think that it was fake news and a false flag that was actually framing Assad. And I think it's wrong that Donald Trump is apparently standing against the Second Amendment right now. And I think it's wrong that Donald Trump hasn't done, hasn't, is actually continuing to keep the surveillance state, the post 9-11 surveillance state that was created by Bush and multiplied by Obama I think that's really bad. You, Donald Trump, you need to be getting rid of the surveillance state. You need to get rid of the Patriot Act. You need to get rid of FISA. You need to get rid of all this stuff that emerged from 9-11 and Barack Obama and George Bush. This is bad stuff. This is very un-American stuff, and it's ungodly stuff. You need to be standing for the Second Amendment. 
and you need to stand for the First Amendment in every place. In any, so there's no business can deny me a Second Amendment right, like Walmart or a business can't deny me the First Amendment right. There can be no uh, free speech restriction zones. There can be no Second Amendment restriction zones, such as government buildings or anywhere. You can't do that, you know? And that's what we had to deal with during the 1960s with segregation, was saying that you can have, you know, states or private businesses or anybody, whether it's a government facility or a state facility or a private business or a private person or anybody in any location whatsoever who can just make a decision, well, I don't allow X, Y, and Z people in here. And I don't allow, and I don't do X, Y, and Z things. So you can't have your first or second or third or 14th or 13th amendment rights or whatever. You can't have that because this is my store, right? No, that's wrong. Jim Crow was unconstitutional and illegal the day it was passed. And it was an illegal, unconstitutional state law. And those troopers and state troopers and policemen etc who were enforcing it were committing crimes the very act of enforcing jim crow was a crime and it was unconstitutional and it was un-american and it was shameful and embarrassing so that's basically what i had to say but really what i want to talk about is that donald trump was really a surprise not and i i voted for him i sent my mail overnight I over I was I, I was living in a different state from where I normally am from. I was doing college elsewhere. So I sent my mail overnight because I'm still a resident of my state. I sent it overnight to the uh, polling center so that my mail would get there and be counted for in my my uh, my my county of where I live, where I'm where I'm from. So, yeah, I I voted for Donald Trump. My vote was counted. And but I, but the point is, I didn't be really become aware of him until like two thirds of the way through his campaign. And I wasn't like hoping for government to be the answer. I was just hoping God to help us to not be conquered. So I hope what I want to warn against is that we don't be like the Israelites who asked Samuel to give them a king. Samuel, please give us a king. So they got King Saul. Samuel, we want a king. No. This whole thing where we want government instead of God, that's a bad thing. Government is not the protector of our rights. God is the protector of our rights. And government is not the one who changes society. God is. And we do by following God and loving him and loving his ways and loving his, his, his commands of righteousness. So that's what I wanted to say. And I want, I'm saying this to myself as well as to you. I'm telling myself not to love government as if it was the answer instead of God, not to reject Samuel and to reject God, but and to choose King Saul to save us from the Philistines. No, I, I, I hope, and I am telling myself as well as you, I hope that we will love God and let him save us from the Philistines and save us through, through righteous people on the ground who are, doing, who are doing good work to change society and make it righteous and serve God and make it more American, just as Hopefully Samuel was trying to make Israel more Israeli. So God bless Israel. God bless America. God bless Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the God the Son. God bless you. God bless me. And God once again, God bless America. And God bless the Constitution. And God bless Donald Trump. Because I like to believe he's not King Saul. And I like to believe he's not even Jonathan, though Jonathan is better. And I'd like to believe that we didn't shoot, you know, do... We didn't pull, we didn't pull a King Saul on him. We didn't do, I would like to believe that we as Americans didn't do the same thing that the Israelis did, asking for a king. I, as far as I know, I hope we didn't, and I don't think we did, and I'd like to think that we didn't. So, and may it be so, and there's many, many voices, but you have to pull out, you have to discern what's true, despite false voices that might mislead you. So you have to find what's true. There's God's word, and there's many interpretations of God's word, 99% of which are wrong. There's only one true interpretation of the word of God. And you need to follow the Holy Spirit to get that. You can't get that from some gray-haired old men who, who claim to be the leaders. Because they're lying, usually, or always. You have to trust the Holy Spirit. You have to trust God alone. Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, and Father. So, you have to follow him individually. That's why God's not a liberal, because he's an individualist. 
He's not a collectivist. He hates collectivism. Collectivism is the opposite of his word. So, thanks for listening. God bless you all, and God bless me. God bless America.